Welcome, boys and girls. Today, we're going to learn how to get to Japan from the United States. To get our answer, the first question we should ask is which way should we go? To find out, let's take a look at the map of the world. So here's Japan, all the way in the Far East, and over here in the West, we have the United States. To get from the US to Japan, you could travel east along the 40th parallel and get to Japan. Or you could go the other way and get to Japan by going west in what seems like the shorter way. So the next question I would ask is how far is Japan from the United States? To find out, why don't we send some crows? So I'm going to send our first crow east along the 40th parallel. This crow starts by flying east over the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it's a good thing icebergs don't fly. Then over Europe and Central Asia. Cool train. It's a good thing we can just fly over the Great Wall. Just have to watch out for those pesky dragons. And here we are, finally in Japan, after traveling over 12,000 miles. Now that was a long journey. I bet this crow is tired. Let's get him some rest. And now we will send a second, smarter crow to Japan in a different way. Now, the smarter crow has been studying world geography, and she goes to Japan by flying west over the Pacific Ocean. And look, she reaches Japan much faster by traveling only a little over 6,000 miles. So we know now that going west is faster than going east. But here's the thing. The shortest way west to Japan is not west. Yeah, you heard me right. To explore further, let's take another look at a map. Except this time, we will look at a globe, not a flat map. We're going to center this globe about the 40th parallel again. And we're going to have a little contest between an aircraft and our smart crow. The smart crow is going west along the 40th parallel like it did before, but the airplane is going to go northwest and fly over Alaska and then southwest to Japan. Now, even though it looks like the airplane travels a longer distance, what actually happens is that the airplane ends up flying 700 miles less than the smart crow. In order to find out why this happens, we now have to ask a different question. How many ways can you slice an orange in half? Now, I use lasers to cut my oranges, just like any normal person would. But don't try this at home, kids, because this laser is sharp. See what I mean? Okay, so back to the oranges. So, we could slice an orange in half from the top. Or, we could slice an orange in half from the side. Or, we could slice an orange diagonally, again, cutting it in half. Now, each time you slice an orange in half, you create what's called a great circle. A great circle is a circle that has the same diameter as our orange or any other sphere-shaped object and shares a center with the orange. So when we cut the orange from the top, we create a different great circle, like so. And when we cut the orange from the side, we also create a great circle. Okay, so you get the idea. Now let's go back to the flat map view. We look at flat maps all the time. And so we start to think that the shortest distance between two points on a flat map is a straight line, which would be true if the Earth was a rectangle. But the Earth, as we all know, is not a rectangle, it's a sphere. And so this idea just doesn't work. To find the shortest distance between two points on a sphere, we can use our new friend, the Great Circle. But what we have to do is find the Great Circle that passes through these two points. And once we find the right great circle, we just draw a path along that great circle and we find the shortest distance between those two points. And this, my friends, is why the shortest distance from the United States to Japan is not west, but instead northwest to Alaska and then southwest to Japan. 